Hi everyone, Victor here again and in today's lesson we will continue with controlling pod scheduling behavior and we will be looking at how to limit resources consumed by application pod or containers. That is, we will ensure that an application does not consume more than a required or a particular amount of compute resources on the node or cluster such as memory, CPU, and etc. We will look at how to use resource request and limit. By default, every application deployed in Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster shares the computing resources such as CPU, RAM, and etc. So, for example, if you deploy 10 applications in the cluster, the computing resources will be shared amongst the 10 applications. But the drawback of this is that some applications consume resources than others, and this can result to improper performance of some other applications due to the fact that due to the fact that some other applications consume too much resources and also vice versa an application may need more than the resources that kubernetes has automatically allocated to function well hence the need to set resource limit that is cpu ram etc for applications in the cluster this is very important in the production environment to avoid malfunction of applications and proper creation of other applications that will be scheduled in the cluster. You should know that limiting the resources consumed by, application, by applications involves using these two parameters, which are request and limit. So what are these? What is resource request and what is resource limit? From the word request, one can request, ask, want, or tell Kubernetes that an application should be scheduled with one CPU or one gigabyte of RAM. And also, from the word limit, a scheduled application can be limited or not go beyond three CPU or three gigabyte of RAM as the case may be. So basically, request is the minimum amount of resources that will be allocated to an application, while limit is the maximum amount of resources that can be allocated to an application. So whenever you set a request, it is also a good practice to always set a limit. Having understood what requests and limits are, let's see the step-by-step -step guide of how to set one. So we're going to be creating the Nginx application and we're going to be setting limits as to the number of CPU the application should use and the number of RAM the application should use. So if you look at my YAML manifest file. So let's look at this deployment for the YML file. So if you look at this manifest file, you will see that we're creating deployment. And under the container section, you need to add the parameter resources. And under resources, you need to add the request. So here you can see that for the CPU request, we're going to be using one CPU and for the memory we're going to be using 30 megabytes meaning that meaning that this nginx application should at least get a minimum amount of one CPU and a minimum amount a, min a minimum memory of 30 megabytes just like the way we defined what request is so here I did not add limit so if I wanted to 
if I wanted to have at least a maximum amount of CPU and memory, then I can add the limit parameter here. So I can just say limit, right? Then I'm also going to add the CPU and memory parameter. But let's even create this application without adding the limit parameter yet. We'll do that later. I just want you to know that you can actually have only request without adding limit. And what this means is that this CPU for the for this application it would have at least one CPU and it can grow unlimited because it can grow to any extent because we do not limit the growth of the um, CPU for this application. Likewise, the memory too as well. It can, you know, grow to an unlimited amount of memory, which might not be okay because it might affect the performance of other um, applications in the cluster, like I've mentioned. But if you set it this way, it's going to work, but it's just that you don't have a limit as to where the CPU or memory for this application can grow to. And if I also specify just limit without specifying request, what it means is that it's going to take the the resources of the limit as the request. So let's create this deployment. So if I do OC create file deployment. For the YAML. So you can see that this deployment has been created. So if I do OC get ports, so the container is still creating. If I do OC get ports, so you can see that the container is running. Let's even see the total amount of memory and the CPU that we have on this node. So if I do OC ADM top nodes. All right, I'm seeing metrics API not available. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm getting this error because I'm using a single node cluster. I'm using CRC. Uh, if I were using Minikube for Kubernetes, um, that has an add-on for metric server. Oh, I, I'm not sure of um, that of CRC. Well, we can also just do this. We can just say OC describe, say OC get nodes. So you can say OC describe node. So I'm going to grab for, for CPU size. So we have four CPU, then I'm going to grab for memory. So it's taking this time. So we can also check if I do OC, OC get ports. And if I do OC describe port this. So if you come to this section here, you can see that here the request we have CPU of one. So the, this container is using one CPU and uh, a memory of 30 megabytes. So let's do something. I'm going to delete this configuration file. So I'm going to say deployment. For the YAML. So I've deleted this deployment. So if I say OC get port, so you can see that we don't have any port here in this cluster any longer. So what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to um I'm going to make sure that I change the number of CPU from four from from one to six because we have the total number of um we have the total, we have total number of four CPU on this cluster. So I'm going to say VI deployment change just to six. 
and we're going to try to create this deployment again. So if I say oh, secret So you can see that the application has been created or the container rather. So if I say OC get port, you can now see that this is pending. And this is pending because on this node, we have just total number of four CPU and we're requesting for six CPU to start with for this Nginx application. And that's why we can see that the status here is pending. So let's try and describe, let's see, also describe pod So if you look at the event here, you can see that here it's saying warning, failed scheduling So if you look at the um, error, it's saying insufficient CPU So that's why this pod cannot be scheduled So what we're going to do next is to add the limit parameter in the configuration file. So I can say bi deployment deployment for the YAML. So here I can add limit. And for I'm just going to add limit for CPU so I'm not going to add for memory so this should not go beyond 2 right and this should be 1 so let's save this file and let's apply so you can say OC apply blah 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 should not be used on resources okay so it's been configured so i can say oc get board so you can now see that this application is running and it cannot exceed to cpu you, you can also use the ad hoc command to set limit resources so if i for example say OC set resources deployment nginx app so I can say dash dash request CPU equals let's use um two right the memory let's use 40 MB and for limit let's use CPU equals 4 or let's use 3 then for memory you can say 100 megabyte So this is taking a lot of time. I guess the cost the cluster is beginning to become unstable. Alright, it's beginning to come it's beginning to become unstable and that's why it's taking time. But just know that you can also set this um, resource limit using the command line. And if you wish to use a namespace, just also specify the namespace namespace and this is also applicable to the YAML manifest file too as well. If you wish to do this on a particular namespace, on the metadata section, just specify namespace, right? And then you can put it on a particular namespace. But because I'm doing this on this app project namespace, which I am in, so that's why I'm not specifying namespace. So I have tried to run this command again and you can see that the requirement has been updated. So this is what I, I just, you know, um, put the, there was a space I used here, right? I removed the space for memory 
and I did the same here too as well and you can see that the requirements has been updated so this is how you're going to create a resource limit I don't want this video to be too long so in the next lesson we're going to see how to create resource quotas in OpenShift so thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel like share comment and when you do this we encourage us to do more of these videos and bye for now